so let me talk about the first one in the binary exploits for Linux section although you're going to see it's just essentially another example of what you've done you'll just see the source code behind it here and this is ed201 Linux buffer overflow with command injection this is a simplest kind of buffer overflow that does not involve assembly code yet so you put in the necessary uh, install build essential and GCC multi-lib and GDB these are the things we're going to need so you can compile 32-bit code on your 64-bit um, Linux machine and this is the vulnerable program and I learned how to do this from Georgia Weedman's textbook which is wonderful in this regard his first uh, time he explained to me you don't have a buffer overflow in main that was one mistake I was making the transition from main back to the operating system is complex for a simple buffer overflow you want it to happen in a separate function but in this case we're not doing a binary buffer overflow anyway so here's the main function the main function takes in your name and uh, puts in a variable 200 characters long then it calls the bo function name and just date now the bo function is supposed to find your name in a variable and just say hello and then execute the command that's in this variable here but it copies it those two parameters into variables that are only 40 characters long so the fact that the input thing is 200 characters long means that this string copy can run off the end and this is why i was saying all the problems we're studying are because of the way c handles memory modern languages like Python or Visual Basic would not do this if you try to put something 200 characters long into a container that's only 40 characters long it ought to not accept that but it does and so you can run out of the name variable and leak into the command variable and have command execution and here's where it prints um, goodbye to your name and here it executes the command from the second variable and this is the system command that executes that bash command that's all it does so I've got this running on my server let me go get out of here and go up here actually it might be a subdirectory here uh, apparently not all right okay there it is so if I catch buff.c all right there's the variable there's the program and if I run it all right I can put in a name like Sam and then it says goodbye to Sam and it executes a command date and, it, and here's the date but if I put in a longer series of strings like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and I put in 10 20 30 40 50 then it says goodbye to all 50 characters and then it tries to execute a command a, -A, -A, -A. so what this means is the first 40 characters went into the name and then because the null byte doesn't appear it doesn't terminate that string so it interprets the next 10 characters to still be part of that name and then it goes back and when it looks for the um, command it goes back to here and reads it to the null so the last portion of this is used again as a command yes that's right there used to be so much trust when C was designed well well C was just intended to make it a little easier to write assembler and you were supposed to understand all this and always remember to put in the null byte keep track of how long things are and all that all that is the responsibility of the programmer that's the problem your programmer is supposed to understand all this and be careful not to make these mistakes but in practice it's too many programmers don't understand it and do make these mistakes yeah anyway so now that means I just have to inject something a little more careful like if I put in 40 characters two three four and then LS then my name is now this mess with LS but now it executes a command LS so by just putting uh, Linux commands after 40 characters I can execute them on the server so I could do this um two three four ls semicolon who am i and so there's the ls and here's the who i am i i'm running as debian on this debian server and so on i now have the ability to inject code here and you can see the linux source code that the, the c source code that leads to this problem this is a buffer overflow 
but it's just overflowing from one string into another string. This is not the most common type of buffer overflow, but it's actually one of the most difficult to stop, and we're going to see when we get to Windows that even the most modern Windows defenses cannot stop this kind of buffer overflow. Anyway, so now you've got um, your code injection point. Now, the one thing that you'll see, one trick is you can't do ls-l easily. If I tried to do ls-l, put in four of these, and then ls space minus l, the space terminates the string. And remember I said before, a null byte will always terminate a string, but depending on how your program is written, other characters might also terminate a string. And here, the space is not understood as a space to be put in the variable. It's interpreted as the end of this variable. So I don't get it ls minus l. I just get it ls. Now it's hard to accomplish much in Linux without being able to use spaces. So that's the first hurdle you have to get around. Well, there are other ways to make spaces. You can put a backslash before the space. You can put the whole thing in quotation marks. You can use this meta character, $IFS, for interfield separator instead of a space. And you'll see that one of those techniques will work here. So anyway, that's all preamble. Now to get your points, you have to exploit my vulnerable server. And the code on my server is very similar, but a little bit different. So here you can do the ls. And here you'll see there's some files and there's a flag and there's something called secret. So again, this is actually a pretty hard one. It took me a little while to get it working. Um, the problem is if I now try to do um, ls referring to a folder or something, when you run it, pay attention up here. You sent this. After sanitizing, it became this. You will find that certain characters are forbidden. So you might type in the command you want, but after sanitizing, some characters will be removed. So you're going to have to execute Linux commands without using certain forbidden characters. And that is a little difficult. There is a way to find the flags, but it took a little work. So be warned, this one's a little bit hard. And uh, of course, remember, you, if you can't do one, you can always just do the extra credit parts of the others to make up for it. And uh, anyway, that's the last one I wanted to show you today, the last version of command injection. And after this, we're going to start directly messing with the binary of the running code, which is the binary exploits down here. And that basically amounts to doing the same thing, but we move from high-level languages like Python and Bash right into assembly language. Don't test live. Oh. Well, yeah, that's why you have your own one to test on. You can, of course, test anything on my server. If you manage to trash it, I can restore it. All right. So I'm going to stop this.